is we opened up for a pitch event uh, after the speaking, and I saw some people actually leave because we got a little late today. Um, little. Uh, um, so I have some names actually. Uh, it's it's a very uh, it's a very informal pitch Thank event, you. Uh, and uh, people uh, people come and talk about their startup. You get about uh, 60 seconds uh, to uh, pitch your startup, and then get feedback uh, from uh, people who are here. So uh, I, I lost track. I think some people started lying. So Danny, yeah, there. Sixty seconds. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to uh, need more? You? No, no, I, I want one hundred twenty, but sixty is good. Ninety, one twenty. Yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, we want time here. Good. Cool. Okay. All right. So, so Danny is gonna is from Hungary. And, I'm just reshaping uh, my pitch. Um, yeah, so, so, so guys, you know, a few things, you know, we want this to be helpful to you, and, uh, you know, so we, uh, you know, you see, uh, the reason we time it, because uh, investors are busy, so when you're going to go and talk with investors, they're not going to say, okay, I'm going to sit here forever, so that's one reason. Uh, secondly, we want Danny to actually improve his pitch, so that's the whole idea, why is he talking to us? He's not looking for business from here. Uh, it's just mine. <laughs> so you know, so it's good to you know, it's, uh, so if you can uh, come out with the good, bad, and the ugly, you know, but uh, how you can improve on this pitch, that will be great. So that's sort of feedback. And if you have any questions, go. All right. Quickly, a couple of questions from me to you guys. How many of you have been to conferences? Hands up, please. Quickly, because you know, so most <laughs> most of us. How many of you have taken home a bunch of business cards without you know, chatting random people, taking on like, business cards and not using them afterwards, throwing them out? I think, yeah, myself as well. And what would you say if you get the same, the same sort of quality out of an event, what, you, what we've done this interaction around, like everyone stood up, said what we're doing, where we're from, what business we're into. And what would you say if you could go to a conference and get the same amount of information from all of thousand people like that, but filtered? So you will see, like, if you go to a conference using our solution, you'll see a list of people who you're most interested in talking to, who you should talk to, and the interest in yourself as well. That those guys could be VCs and you could be a startup guy. Those guys can be you know, experts, designer, tech guys, and you, have, you could be a startup guy or a team builder guy who needs a designer on the team. And then you will know that you, know, you sort of import your profile onto our platform, do a five minutes preparation for, before you go to a conference, and then you get a list of uh, recommendations which guys are interested in you and who you're interested in as well. And that's, we make a matchmaking, sort of like a pre-dating event. And when you go to the date, to the conference, you only, only have to, you know, sort of get, a, get an appointment and sort of dis dis uh, discuss where you're going to meet and uh, what time you're going to meet the guys you're interested in. And the person who organized the conference will get, give you access to the attendees? That's, okay, was it clear? I mean, that was the shortest speech I could do, I think. Was it clear what we're doing? Yeah, no, okay. yeah like, actually uh, it's not clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I add two things, who we create value for. We create value for the, the conference attendees, you guys, myself, you know, we all mm -hmm. be on those shoes. We create value for the VCs who don't really have time, you know, to, bro to watch through two minutes, ten minutes of videos, and like tons of them, and like one-pagers, hundreds of one-pagers. Those guys, we have, and access to your uploaded video which 45 seconds like it's really short team video and after the matchmaking he watches those 10 videos which which you know supposedly he's interested in and then gets a personal in, an impression about your team your face on it and you, you're speaking about your startup idea whatever and then that sort of guarantees the VCs and the guys with the money that they will only talk to people who's interesting for them and also we create value for the conference organizers because uh, they can uh, validly state that on their event matchmaking happens. So you, you, you definitely will have some very valuable connections after leaving the event. And now the questions. Sorry. It's almost like a Tinder for entrepreneurs. <laughs> if that's the question, I, I might ask for another two minutes because, yeah, yes and no. Because why? Uh, there are a lot of on site uh, Tinder like solutions on conferences, but no one uses them. Because once you're here, you're not gonna, you know, like, I'm just doing this, and like, yeah, no, based on a LinkedIn headline, or so it's not, not really, 
based on experience and based on feedback, not the on-site mobile app, what, what really cracks the nut here, but what, what's, what's really, really valuable, if you spend five minutes before the event, dedicate on the train, on the plane, on the bike, not that much, but you know, <laughs> why, why are you going to the conference? And then there you get this sort of matchmaking stuff, and then on the conference, obviously, yes, you need something to, to keep in touch with those guys with, apart from emails and, and text, maybe. So we, we focus on pre-event engagement, on-site, not, on, not, not really in focus. And then the other thing is the post-event community building, basically. So if, 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 we, if the event or the conference is organized by a brand or sort of a, a, a bunch of guys who are interested in keeping a community together, not like 10,000 people in one community because that's not a community, but if you say, if you have a dedicated uh, conference for health startup first in Seattle, well that's a community and then you're interested in keeping those guys together and you're sort of trying to build some features into this platform that ensures that those guys can stay in touch, you know, not using a Facebook group because that's also a thing what's happening right now that these secret Facebook groups, you know, even these Facebook groups, you must be like, I don't know, a member of tens of these, like this alumni, those guys. But if you have a whole set of features which makes it easier for you to stay in touch, discuss relevant topics, you know, solve projects together, then that's another value for that community. Okay. Questions? Like, come on, guys. Further questions? Is it, uh, you have that? It yeah, like it's it's a it's a it's an a it's not a mobile app. It's a web app currently. The product is bit by by what it, it a couple of times. It started with B 2 C and now it's more B 2 B because we, we do believe that unless you reach a certain mass of consumers, they're not gonna they're not gonna pay for it if there's no one on this platform, right? So what we're trying to do is put it as an add-on to a conference, so you can basically you're not going to pay for it, the conference organizer might pay for it, and the VCs, who, who, whose time is really precious, sort of, that they, they, be, they might be able to pay for it as well, because basically we create value for them. And once we, once we reach a critical mass of, you know, if there's 100, if, if we compete with AngelList, maybe then at that point we can charge for some extra features, but that's, you know, very far down the line, so. Yeah, well, we have the data, yeah. The new release. The new release is going to come up next week. What's the website address? What's the address? Uh, yeah. Did you come use the If there's some space, yeah. You made some. It's pitch hopper, like a grass hopper, but pitch hopper. Pitch hopper. What are the growth channels which are working for you guys? What are the growth channels you are exploring right now? Growth channels. Growth channels. Oh, growth channels, yeah. Uh, we're, what we're here, we're here for two weeks in San Francisco and one week in Los Angeles. But what we, basically, we're trying to get some feedback on the stuff. And the second one, to answer your question, is we try to connect with conference organizer for companies, you know, groups who, who do deal with not like 50 people but like 200 and over that and then if you could if you could manage to do some partnership with those guys then basically whoever registers to their conference we have a chance or we'll be obliged to sort of get onto our platform as well and that sort of start to accumulate the user base and from then on it's going to be we hope it's going to be self-accumulating we tried the digital marketing doesn't work don't ever try that <laughs> Just no I, I can see that this is, in some ways, this is kind of uh, an exact match with what meetup.com is also doing. I don't, we, meetup? Meetup. The meetup, you know, platform, the way it's structured. Uh, so do you see yourself maybe launching with that thing and then... No, we see, we see them as potential partners because we see that this is an added value service for meetup as well. I mean, meetup, most likely, you guys, if you come here, like 50 of us, we have the chance to talk. If, if you really want to, you can talk with everyone from the room, right? You know, because we all stood up, we all sat very from and what we do, we all basically have a picture. So with these sort of smaller events, in this scale, not really, if you talk about the meetup of 200 people, 
then maybe even Meetup could monetize that sort of event. I mean, if you do an event for 200 people and then you say, okay, pay one dollar, and then you, you, know, you get to go to this platform and then you can sort of do some matchmaking with those guys who also join this platform. I mean, after a certain user base, obviously, after those guys also use that. So then it's sort of, we see a partnership opportunity with, with Meetup, not like a competitor. We don't wanna organize a conference, we don't wanna do a platform for that. We're gonna, yeah. I, I mean, right now I've been to quite a few conferences. Yeah. Uh, when I go back, let's say there was a conference in January this year. Okay. That I went to. When you go back to that URL, you can see that the conference is over. The you know there are, there's a list of speakers and whatnot, and there's nothing else left in terms of interacting with it. Yeah. So if, so are you like I, I I'm not quite clear how it works, but are you suggesting that you will create some kind of a embedded page within that event? So that people can keep track and keep their connection with the mm, event. So not, yeah. Not is the that question. the idea? Is that what you? That's phase two. That's not the embedded, not the embedded stuff on the event website, but rather like a community based on who attended that event through our platform. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not going to happen from day one because you know, obviously have to be with, so have how do to you make, yeah? keep people out. Of it? Like, how do I know whether I belong in that event or not? Like, what is the? If process? you okay, you. We go to Collision next week, right? You, let's suppose you, you bought a ticket for Collision and then there's a button on the bottom of the side that if you click here, take an extra three minutes, register on our platform, import your AngelList, LinkedIn, whatever profile we can integrate with, and then you know fill out these two other brackets and then click you know matchmaking and then you'll see the list and then obviously you're gonna be in the collision event box and you'll also be able to check out who else is going to what event that sort of makes you explore other events to see if there's if you if you if there is an event I mean never heard of it ever before and then you see wow there's like hundred people who I should definitely talk to because I'm doing this I don't know this sort of industry this sort of phase I need funding or I need developers or I need these guys. And then I'm, you might go to the event, right? And then you might sort of click there, RSVP, buy the ticket. And uh, that sort of, that can also generate revenue for event organizers to see, you know, to accumulate people, to, to drag in people who's interested in the crowd which attends their event. Did that answer the question? Okay. Cool. Questions? Okay, so, um, no, say hey, please. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, um, I work with the uh, I work with the Founder Institute also, and one thing I learned from there is like we rate uh, pitches uh, by founders at, uh, on a scale of one to five, and uh, but not threes, not threes. Okay, so you're gonna, you're not threes. Yeah, no, most of the people are like, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. No threes. So if you guys can raise your uh, hand and just share what's your rating for a pitch. Yeah, people uh, that are honest. Uh, yeah, honest and one obviously here. being the, the, the least and uh, the five being the best. So if you guys can just give a rating from one to five. No threes. Four. Four. Yeah, four can be, three cannot be. No, the idea is very, very good, but what I was most worried about is the privacy of people who go to the conference. Maybe they don't want to be connected with anyone. They just don't register. Don't use the service. I mean, avoid it from the first point. Uh, okay. The thing, no. the privacy, that's, that's, that's a good question. I'm, I, I could talk about for, for uh, on oh, okay. half an hour, an hour. Let's say I'm a who, VC and I don't want everybody to jump on me when I'm at that conference. It's just when it's, it's mutual interest, only then. Okay. So it, it's like Tinder. If you swipe it right, nothing's going to happen. If both you swipe it right... Then you then match. Then, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. So it has to be mutual. Absolutely. Excellent. I, I love it. Okay, great. It's oh. a great idea. It's a great Thank idea. You. Thank you. Thanks. I think uh, I, I see Rajiv is gone. Is Rajiv? Oh, Rajiv is here. Yeah, I thought uh, you walked out. A lot of people are gone. <laughs> Okay, so Rajiv is, uh, I mean, he's, he's from the U.S., but uh, originally he's from India, and he's going to be talking about his uh, startup, Scribby. Thank you. So, uh, hi, I'm Rajiv. So, I'm, uh, I'm the founder of uh, Scribby.com. So, Scribby is an audio-video transcription service. We convert audio files to text for mostly uh, journalists, researchers, podcasters, filmmakers. <coughs> So the problem with audio-video transcription is that it's all done manually. The automation is completely non-existent in this world. 
It is uh, machines are very bad at conversational audio. Right? Therefore, uh, everything has to be done manually, which takes a lot of time and is expensive. So we built a system. We, uh, we what we do is we split the files up, we crowdsource the transcripts. And then uh, our dedicated QA team, which we have back in Bangalore, they QA it to make sure the file is as accurate as possible. Right? So you get a very high quality transcript in the end without compromising on the process. Right? So uh, we also have some tools, uh, some machine learning tools that we have developed, which speeds up the process. Right? So that is basically the key to our success. It's, it's a differentiator from the rest of the competition. So we are growing at around 50 percent year on year, and we are looking to we are looking to build a marketing team here. Right. So if uh, people, if anybody is interested to join us, right, we will we'll, we are welcome. We are looking for people. Right. If you have anybody who you know is uh, looking for a job, is into marketing, right, wants to join a startup which which is growing fast, then please please join us. That's all. I have a few questions. Yeah. Uh, so, the name, uh, how do you spell this name? Scrippy. It's a transcription, so oh. you take the script, script out. Yeah. Yeah. So, script, scribe was not available, scribe was, IE was. So. Oh, scribe yes. okay, okay. So, uh, is this uh, something that you're making available to everyone in the market? Is it like a consumer level tool? Or? It is. It is okay. complete. It's, uh, it's online, it's available. You, if you have an interview, recorded interview, if you, for example, sometimes we uh, transcribe events like this, right, where you record the event and somebody uploads it, we transcribe the whole thing, whatever the speaker has said and whatever we can hear, and then even put it on the website, right. So what happens when you put it on the website is you get organic SEO hits, right. A lot of podcasters do, right, podcasters when they record interviews, right, sometimes they put the transcript along with the file, so that they get some uh, SEO value out of it. So I have a company that I've worked with before. I'm just uh, trying to understand the so, And they did this study where they would walk people through an experience and it would be a group of, it's a focus group yeah. of people, 20 people walking through an, an amusement park, for example, okay. and everybody's talking. So are you saying that you can actually break that conversation down into a transcript? So if are people, you recording? If, yeah, and it's recorded. It's in 20 people are talking. So you can if, actually if pick people up. are speaking, we can transcribe. And you can distinguish between different voices. Yes, yeah, this is all manually done, right? We are not using any, any machine uh, machine transcription. You mean this being recorded, you can do a transcript of it? Yes, if it's audible, if if my voice is loud enough. Yeah. Right? If we can hear it, you can hear it, then we can transcribe. Really? And what is the response time? So the fastest we can get a file back is around eight hours. That is very pricey, around three dollars per audio minute, which is uh, one hour of audio will cost you around two seventy dollars. Oh my goodness! But if you if you can wait for a for a month, right, that will cost you around uh, sixty dollars. Nice. Around actually forty five for a month is forty five dollars. So one hour of audio. Hmm. So, are you pitching this to like entertainment companies? I can think about closed captioning so, being such a big market. Right? So, the uh, the funny thing is that we haven't had to go out and market it yet. Right? People just come through us through word of mouth and organic searching on Google when they find us and they use the services. Right? So, we are completely a consumer focused company. We are not trying any B2B. We want to get into B2B, right? which is why we need to set up a market. But uh, like people like you and like her with very strong accent, can can the machine pick up? So it's not machine at all. It's all humans. Oh, humans. Okay, okay, okay. I thought there was a machine. No, there's no machine. Not yet. There will be one day, right? Uh, when when that comes, it will replace basically the first step in our process, right? Instead of the typing being done manually, the machine right. will do the typing. Oh, okay. Right, but we are focused on the rest of the stuff, which is the QA part. So an actual human is listening and transcribing? Yes. Oh, got and it. It is all crowdsourced and it's all, all over the world. People, we have 6,000 registered transcribers. Oh, wow. Right, working 24-7 globally. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. I tried to transcribe my show one time and it took a whole day. I said, no, forget it. I can't do that. 
But we break up the files and what we do is we distribute the effort. So it's not one person spending eight hours. Yeah. It's 25 people spending maybe two hours. Uh, oh, everybody takes a piece of the yes. speech? I see. Okay. Distributed transcription? Yeah, it's, it's crowdsourced. It's crowdsourced, but the trick is that we actually do quality assurance. The problem with crowdsourcing is you give a file to one person in Philippines, you never know what's going to come back to you. Right? Yeah. So that's they, why we have the they, QA part and we use tools there. Oh. Right? And that's our differentiator. We oh. use tools to help us do QA. Oh my goodness. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, okay. uh, any, uh, quick rating, guys. Uh, one to five. I don't know. Thank you. Maybe three. Okay. But you know, you, you gotta look from a perspective. If you are an investor and you gotta put money in this company, what do you put money after listening to what you said? I think uh, what I thought about both the pictures uh, was that the product is very amazing. You actually need to pitch it in a much better way. And if you can pitch it in a like, I think you need some explanation videos. And if you see a demo, it brings so much more credibility. Right. That is what I feel. So basically what you are saying is you are interested and you want to like, you would like to... I would want to know more about the product. So that's my hook. So I have hooked you in. Yeah, in this two minute elevator pitch I had happened just for you. Of course. The thing that I see is being wrong with your physical right now is it isn't very scalable. You can grow, but in order to really make the growth like this, you need software. So let me complete So I understand your question. Great question. So let me complete the piece. So I, I left out a part on tension. So the tools that we use, right, we have developed some machine learning tools which help us with QA. Right? So that